coolest new features in XCS 2.0. So I'm going to create a text box by either clicking on this left hand menu for text or just hitting the letter T on your keyboard and clicking on the canvas. There are three processing types that we want to test when we get a new material. They're score, engrave, and cut. I'm just going to turn this to engrave so you can see it a little better and turn it off because there's no reason for us to have our machine um, process this box at all. So when you are inside the new XCS 2.0, it's very similar, but everything is moved around. When you are selected on an item, you can see this transform box. You'll see the object menu and all of its sub menus pop up and over in the layers panel accessed at the very bottom left, you can see that something is highlighted in your objects list. When you deselect it, the highlight in the object list goes away, the transform box goes away and you're set at the processing menu. So let's pretend we're using base plate. Any of our machines, it doesn't matter. You have the option to run other stuff, but again, we are testing something flat and we can choose it from right here. I tend to share a lot of tutorials where I'm using this user-defined material. And that means that I will come in here and if I'm engraving something, I can say, I'm going to go ahead and change this. Let's say I'm engraving, I want 40 and 25. I don't know. I'm just making that up. We didn't even choose something. But that right there is something I can choose as well as, let's say I'm going to pop my LPC lines per centimeter up to 160. So that is user defined. I am telling the machine what to do. However, if you choose one of these materials, you can either choose from what's listed here or you can go and search. So let's just do something simple like basswood. Do not pay attention to the subtitles down here. You want to pay attention to the width or the um, thickness of your material that you have. When you click on your material, it's going to bring up whatever your last connected machine was, but you can come in here and change whatever. You can also change in your wattage of your machines and here's the cool part, processing type. So these are the ideal settings according to Xtool, 100, and, uh, 100 power and 15 for cutting. For engraving, I just drop down ah, and you can see that their ideal settings are going to be 20 and 200. Now, you can actually click right here and change it as much as you want and then open this in XCS. So when you click this green button, watch what happens. We now have a material selected in our processing menu and when we click on an item, we have reference here. When we open the easy set panel, you'll see the exact same image and you can even make it bigger. Okay, so you can see this is exactly what we had before. Here is Xtool's ideal settings of 20 and 200. If you click any of these, it automatically changes the parameters in two places here on the easy set panel and here on the processing object. So let's pretend we want to look at this and say, girl, I don't want to start a fire. So I don't need any of these three and I don't want this one either. I will tell you when you increase your power and you decrease your speed, that is where you could get a warning coming up in the system, but also, you know, fire. So we want to limit anything that will give us those results. Those results are not pretty. We don't want to have to deal with that cleanup. So let's just remove them from our test. But I do want to test this. So I want the 50 power and I want the 250 speed. So how do we do that? We are going to start at 10 power, go up to 50, and we're going to start at 50 speed and go up to 250. And I'm just going to double click my little text box here and we're going 10 to 50 for power. Let me move that. Now you can see it. So we're going to go 10 to 50 for power, but our test is also going to have to have speed, which will be 50 to 250. Okay. Now you would do that for each of these because as you change the item, this changes as well. So you just go in and you would see, uh, don't do 10 and honestly, don't do 250, right? We're going to make a test right in here. 
Okay, so let me change that back to engrave because that's what we're gonna pretend we are doing. I'm gonna make this text box a little bit smaller. You can see I'm just going to pull it out of the way. Now, how to set up a test in XCS. You can come over here and create a rectangle, a circle, or you can be like me and want to test multiple lines at a time. And what I mean by that is I want this curve like a circle, but I also want this directional change of the laser. So I use a heart. That's just, you can use this little upside down triangle. That's a great test as well, because again, you get the curve and you get the point uh, directional changes. So I'm just going to set that as 0.4 of an inch so our test doesn't take up, you know, 50 meters of our material. If you have a pop out menu over here that you don't like, you can just hit the tab and it will close. Now, as you can see, if we hit the layers menu, there is nothing selected. But in order to do a test, I actually do need to select this heart. So we need the transform box or we need the highlight either way. We also need to indicate what test we're doing. So I'm going to select engrave because that's the one we just did. Your reference and settings here do not matter. We're going to come over here to the apps or applications menu and we're going to select material test array. Now this looks a lot like our previous software and we're just going to do a little bit. We're going to, oops, that's power. So we're going to leave power at 100. No, we're not. We're going to put power at 50 and we're going to go down to 10 again because we have already determined what our settings will be. We want uh, our speed to top out at 250 and start at 50. Now for those of you new to XCS, you can increase the number of rows and the number of columns so that you can get a little tighter on each of these. There you go. And if it's something that you're doing a lot of, for instance, if I'm engraving slate, slate will change colors very well depending on power and speed. So I actually do a pretty extensive test on slate. On basswood, which is what I think we selected, it will not matter. So once we select OK, you can see everything is selected here. It's because it's grouped. And we know that because in the object menu over on the right, it says ungroup. So let's ungroup that real quick. Remember from our easy set panel, we had fire potential here on 30, 40, 50, and on the next line up, which is 50 and 100. So let's go ahead. Now that it's ungrouped, we're just going to select all three of these and do the delete and this one and do the delete. Now we've eliminated a good portion of fire potential. Okay, that's what we need. So I'm also going to copy and paste, which is Command C or Control C and Control V. We're going to change this to engrave so it's easier for me to see. And I'm going to double click. And I'm going to say this is three millimeter basswood ply in Xtool brand. So that is going to give me any time I need to reference the engraving test, I can just pull that out. And the reason is, is because even though Xtool says this is what their laser did on their material, I need to still test it for my laser. So then I would just do a couple things and I'd clean up this stuff to be a little tighter. And I would also add in a rectangle for a cut function. So I can put this with the rest of mine. Um, and, and to do that, we have selected that rectangle we just put and we're going to do cut. Now, because we have our material selected, it's actually going to enter our reference settings for us. You can choose to keep those or you can choose to adjust them. Again, you can just click on one of these that cut or you can drop your speed um, or increase your speed down here and your power as well. So now. I'm going to share one more thing because I'm asked about this a lot. If you want to put your um, material tests on a ring, you can just add a circle over here. You don't have to even change it, but we're going to change it to cut. Then we're just going to select the circle and the outside uh, rectangle. And we're going to come over here to the combine menu to the second option, which is subtract. Now it will cut that circle from this square and allow you to put it on a ring. Now we select everything and select group and we are ready to run our test. 
If you don't like this popping out, you can just turn this off and then next time when you click on something, it won't pop out that panel. And that is it. That is the quick way to make a smart test using the brand new feature of material settings Xtool has provided us. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know down below and subscribe for more tutorials.